Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I have a great topic I want to talk about today, and it's one that I've been asked a lot, and I think would be great for us all to hear, and that is what to make as your first mead. As a beginner, it is kind of overwhelming to look up mead making, and then you see all the millions of different kinds of meads you can make. So I want to um, try and give some advice from myself, but also I pulled my, my Facebook group, and then I also pulled some YouTube comments and just asked the question, what should you make? So, um, whether you're a beginner or someone who has made a lot of meads, um, of course leave your comments down below, but tell me what you think. The big consensus, and I'll go ahead and throw up all the comments um, that we that people left, in that of what to make as your first mead, the majority said to make a traditional mead, meaning honey, water, yeast, let it go. And um, now there's a couple variations people put on that, but the big thing is, I believe that's a great thing to do. The, the consensus that everybody said is also what I agree with. I think you need to make the simple mead first before you decide, I'm going to make the crazy stuff. And that's okay. Honestly, it's easiest to go ahead and just do that. So making a traditional mead, it probably should be highest on the priority of first meads. And for anyone wanting to do that, it is as simple as, like I said, however much water you want to put in, um, generally about three to four pounds, or I'll say two to four pounds, depending on the strength of your mead, um, uh, per gallon of water, and then a, pa a packet of yeast. I like a lot of Lauvin products, but there are a, a ton of other ones. Red Star is great. Um, there's also White Labs. Um, they use liquid yeast, so you can use dry yeast, liquid yeast, anything like that. But between those three things, basically, you have a traditional mead, and that gets you started in the world of mead making because you'll be surprised how quickly you just jump into other things from that point. But I think a lot of people get overwhelmed with wanting to make the crazy mead at first. I want to make the mead, um, you know, with all these kinds of teas and all this, you know, 14 ingredients and that gets a little bit scary. What you can do as a beginner, and this is also what I saw a lot of people suggest, and that is to make a big batch of your first mead. And then split it up. So let's say that you make a, instead of a one gallon batch to start, you make a three gallon batch. So your recipe might be something like, um, <coughs> might be about three gallons of water, or let's say about two and a half because uh, honey does take up volume. Two and a half gallons of water, um, about nine pounds of honey, let's say, and then a packet of Lauvin D47, okay? So that will put you somewhere, I'm just totally guessing, in the gravity of, your gravity is your possible ABV, of maybe about uh, ultimately 1.12, or, or that's about 15%-ish. Uh, and that is a fairly strong mead, pretty normal strength mead, to be frank. Um, but once that has done finished fermenting, you can take the three gallons, split it into three one gallons, and then from there decide, okay, do I want to try and put some blueberries into one? Do I want to try and put some cherries into another? Do I want to try and do this? Whatever. Um, and there, there you can try your experimentation. You can leave one normal, whatever. That's what I did with one, my, let's see, my very first three meats, that's what I did. And I am super glad I did it because ultimately it allowed me to try a bigger batch, I was able to have a lot of meat to try, but then I was also able to experiment more. And um, that's a great thing to do as a, as a beginner. It is a little cumbersome though, it's scary to be going out and buying 9 pounds, 10, 12 pounds of honey for your first time because that's a fair amount of honey, that's kind of expensive, but when you think about <laughs> compared to buying alcohol as opposed to making it in the long run, you do come out on top. So that's one thing to think about. So take, make a big batch of a traditional break it down into a couple different parts, and then experiment with your things. Um, so that was one, making a traditional, that's the consensus what most people said. Then there's the other route, if you want to try to be more, um, just along the guidelines of, of a recipe, you can do stuff like the uh, Joe's Ancient Orange Mead, J-A-O-M, as it's abbreviated a lot of times. That's a very clear, um, uh, recipe mead that has been repeated over and over again. It's pretty simple. Um, tells you exactly what to do. That's really nice. Um, there's also the Viking Blood, um, which is another one that people do a lot of. You can look that one up. Um, there are a bunch of various types of mead that people really like to make um, that are recipe driven. 
what you can do as a beginner, it's sometimes nice to go ahead and make something that has a clear, um, a clear recipe to it. Then, uh, I also heard some other people say stuff like make a mellow mel. So for anyone who wants to, or no, wants to make a mead, a, there are a bunch of different types of meads, and I won't start listing them off because that gets a little scary too, because there are a bunch of them. But a mellow mel is a type of mead that uses fruit. Um, is fruit not based, but has a fruit flavor to it. So let's say you make your traditional. You can make that into a mellow mel by adding your your apples, your pears, or your peaches, or whatever you're gonna do, that makes it into a mellow mel. Um, what also you can do, you can you can also do is you can put your fruit into the primary of something, and that would make it into a mellow mel, or your whatever else you put in. Ultimately, um, a mellow mel is just a mead that has a fruit flavor attached to it, and those are also great because people like hard ciders, like apple ciders, and, and various other ones you can think of. Um, and that mead is very similar to that in some ways. So Mellow Mel is great. Um, then that goes down the rabbit hole of all the different types of styles of mead, which I won't even get into in this video. That's a whole nother world. If you are a beginner wanting to make your first mead, um, make the thing you want to, whatever got you enthused by making mead. Um, and, and I will just say the guideline of try, I'm trying to make a traditional, just honey water yeast, call it good, then become experimental after your first one. But a little tip from me, in my opinion, is when you make when you make your first one, go ahead and make a second one pretty fast because you might find yourself in a situation like I did where I really liked it quickly and then I went, wait, now I gotta wait a month, two months before I can like try this next one. And so then you kind of play this waiting game. So also it helps for if you make another one for waiting on your first one, you're not necessarily stuck there watching something bubble for two months or a month, whatever, and, and just waiting, saying I wanna drink it whenever you have something else going on. And it might turn into a rabbit hole like it did for me, and that now I'm in, standing in my mead room and I have lots of meads around me bubbling and it's great. Um, but the final thing I wanna say is, before you go too crazy trying your own meads and these things, make sure you try a commercial mead. Try a mead that a, a professional company has made because that will give you better reference for what your mead, not should taste like, but what uh, what meads taste like than just trying your own. Um, there's a thing called, in the wine world, called cellar tongue, and really it kind of goes for beer and mead, and that is where you only drink the things you make, and so you never have exposure to what commercial breweries are making. And ultimately, we do make things for ourselves, but you do also make them to hopefully share with friends and you want them to like it too. So the commercial breweries don't always get it right, but they get it right a lot of the time. So you can kind of trust they're doing the right things. And not to take the recipes, not to follow suit for anything they're doing, but to get an idea of what mead is supposed to taste like. And also help support the companies that we're, we're part of. You're part of a community where we're making mead. We want to to support our fellow mead makers, especially commercial breweries. Even if it does cost a little money, it's good to be supportive of those people because you one day might want to make your own commercial meads, in which case you want backing too, just like they do. So um, overall, I'll make it traditional, but make what you want. Um, ask your friends, ask communities, get on Reddit, get on our Facebook, get on Facebook mead making groups, get on YouTube videos, ask what people will also think and I think you'll find some of the same answers, hopefully I've consolidated them, but ultimately, ultimately I wanted to um, just hopefully give you my opinion. Not that I'm the, the end all be all of the opinion by any means. So if you want to be part of those groups that talked about this, that got to be uh, involved in, in, in doing this poll, we have our Facebook. That is www.facebook.com slash manmade meadery. That is a group that um, I call a meadery. It's really not, I don't sell my meads. I just make it, we have this community where we get to talk about making mead. It's a lot of fun. There's also YouTube. If you're not subscribed, you can join this. And I, we do these videos a lot. We get to talk and we can communicate in that way. Um, and then I have some other links down below. I've got a Patreon where you can join and support me and, and help me. Uh, continue to make content for you guys um, and you get some perks too, which are nice too. Um, then some other links, PO Box, whatever else you want to check out. Check it down, check out those down below. 
Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for the people who gave me your input. I appreciate that. And uh, maybe you might be one of those people that gets to put in input for the next video that I do a community poll. So check those out. Um, very excited for the future of this channel and I hope you guys are too. So I will see you in another video um, and cheers.